Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I have money right here. I should be wise and save it, but I feel like wasting it instead. The only question is, what to waste it on? Food? Alcohol? Student loans? Definitely not that one. 12 minutes later. I got it. I'll waste it on useless trinkets. It's perfect. But not this one, though. Money is a precious thing in the world. It's something everybody needs, but we all just spend it on a lot of random things we don't really need. When I think wasting money, some of the things I think of are taxes, student loans, actual collectibles, and subscriptions to literally anything. When you hear the word subscription, it's always about paying for a certain item periodically for a certain amount of time until you decide to cancel the subscription. There are several things that are tied to subscriptions, like magazines, services like Netflix and Hulu, random things like PlayStation Now and Spotify, and even boxes. I admit things like Netflix are fine enough to actively have a subscription to because, well, it's Netflix. Magazines might be a bit outdated by today's standards, but they have a special place in everybody's hearts. Subscription boxes involve getting a box full of exclusive little trinkets and souvenirs that may or may not be available in stores or online. The biggest pro is that they provide some form of ongoing joy that people will actually enjoy, depending on the reason. However, the biggest con is that instead of just a one and done payment, it's a continuous flow of money regardless of the good or service provided. For example, I could subscribe to Netflix or Paramount Plus to watch the entirety of my favorite show, which would involve a monthly payment that would last until I decide to cancel it. Or I could just pay for the seasons and movies on DVD slash Blu-ray and watch them that way, which involves simple one-time payments of each season and movie on DVD or Blu-ray, as well as a player if I need it. I don't. Don't get me wrong, Netflix is perfectly fine, and what I'm saying really only applies to the type of situation I mentioned. If your favorite show is readily available on DVD and Netflix, then either are acceptable viewing methods. It's really down to personal preferences. But of course, this isn't today's topic. I'm talking about subscription boxes here. Subscription boxes are all about paying a monthly fee to get a handful of useless trinkets. Of course, the reason you subscribe to the aforementioned subscription boxes or whatever subscription service is because you really enjoy it and you want to consume this entertainment. Or to waste money. But subscription boxes are mostly for random little trinkets that some people may get use out of or will just look at once or twice and then never look at again. This would be like if you were staying at a hotel once a month, even if you weren't going on vacation, and buying something from the hotel gift shop every single time. The main subscription box brand I remember was Loot Crate. Loot Crate was a provider of all things geeky and gamer merchandise for... whoever wanted it. I may like Spongebob, but I'm also a gamer. I mean, what self-respecting cartoon watcher doesn't play video games as well? During the 2010s, I've seen a handful of gaming channels post a video that was sponsored by Loot Crate, and they would send a box for that internet personality to unbox on camera and talk about whatever was in the box. While I thought the items looked neat, I mostly watched the videos because they were my favorite channels at the time, and I'm sure everybody else did too. The boxes they unboxed were usually either general loot crates or loot gaming, which obviously was about video games. Even the loot gaming boxes never appealed to me personally because, in terms of games, I'm mostly a Mario guy and I never saw anything Mario or even Nintendo related when they were unboxed. Over the years, I tried more franchises than just Mario, but I still didn't see much that really spoke to me. Unfortunately, Loot Crate filed for bankruptcy in 2019, so I probably won't see or hear much from them anymore. That's not to say all subscription boxes are bad, not at all. Loot Crate has a lot of variety with what they include in their boxes, and it's a complete gamble if you'll get something that appeals to you. There are some boxes that are specifically themed after something that are perfect gift ideas if you know somebody that's into it. For example, I saw a PlayStation themed subscription gift box online and at Target, and that's automatically a perfect gift idea if you have a friend, family member, or significant other that is a fan of the PlayStation 1. But as you probably figured out, there is indeed a Spongebob subscription box, but I also have to say, it is a little presumptuous of you to just assume that I have it. And you're correct to assume so. In the latter half of 2020, I saw some online advertisements for a Spongebob themed subscription box, and I'm not gonna lie, the box alone looked pretty cool. I showed it to my family, and I got it for Christmas at the end of that year. And it was so cool, it was one of my three favorite gifts from that year. Disclaimer, I am not sponsored. 
by the Nick Box in any way whatsoever. As I just mentioned, this was a Christmas present, so I just thought I'd open the gift right now. Over a month later. Alright, I've always wanted to do something like this ever since I first saw this six years ago on the internet. Starting off, the box looks cool. Greeting from the bikini bottom, eh? So it's the only bikini bottom around. Little Spongebob stamp in the corner, some random scribbles representing where the return address would be. On the sides, it's yellow. The top and bottom are blue with a giant Spongebob logo, and the back is blue with the bikini bottom sky flowers, and it's black on the bottom, and it says, Made in China and built by Culturefly. Just like every other product says, Made in China as well. Enough stalling. Let's get into it. Okay, so when we open up the box, we're greeted to Spongebob space on the flap of the box, a hat, three smaller boxes, and a postcard. On one side, this card has the same design on the front of the box, and on the other side, spoils everything that's in the box. No spoilers! Moving on, we have a Chum Bucket Bucket Hat. It fits, but it feels like a wasted opportunity to beat a hat that looks exactly like the Chum Bucket Bucket Helmet from the Spongebob Squarepants movie. In this box, we have a pencil holder with a built-in sharpener. I only have mechanical pencils, so I can only test the holding part, not the sharpening part. In this box, there's a coffee mug with Mrs. Pop's boating school on one side, and on the other side, there's a step-by-step -step procedure on how to drive a boat. The final small box has a vinyl figure of SpongeBob with a hat, map, and suitcase. Well, this is the first vinyl figure I've ever owned, and just like the mug, which may be collectible, it's only a trinket. On the bottom, there's a blue t-shirt. On the front, it says the Krusty Krab since 1999. And on the back, it says people order our patties. Ah, ooh. But none of that matters if it doesn't fit. And luckily it's my size and after putting it on, it does indeed fit. We also have a notebook based on the recipe for the secret Krabby Patty formula, which is heavily inspired by the book for the Krabby Patty formula from episode 114, Plankton's Army. When we look inside, it's literally for writing down recipes. Finishing it off, there's a Krusty Krab pin. And that's it. As SpongeBob's biggest fan, this box is pretty cool. Of course, as a fan, most of these I'll probably look at a couple times and never again. On the other hand, I do have a lot of SpongeBob stuff, but I wouldn't call myself a hardcore collector. If anything, I would say I collect the complete season and movie DVDs, mostly so I have the entire series on hand. I don't watch them a lot since I have other things going on these days, but I would binge them if I had a long enough chance, but that doesn't happen these days. Looking at the box critically, the mug, notebook, and pencil holder I could get use out of, but the vinyl figure is the thing I would get the least use out of. On the other hand, you can't have a subscription box without at the very least one useless trinket, and this is absolutely that. Going back to what I said about subscription boxes as a whole, this is a pretty good gift if you know anybody who's into Spongebob. Getting something like a regular loot crate has too much variety, you won't know if you'll get something you're a fan of. Something like the retro gaming subscription boxes are pretty decent if you or somebody else you have a close relationship with likes retro gaming. In my opinion, those have more going for them compared to something like Loot Crate DX. But no matter what box you pay for, they all have one thing in common. They all involve wasting money. Subscription boxes don't appeal to everybody and can sometimes feel like you're just throwing away money. But I'd say if there's a subscription box that you would personally be interested in, then I'd say feel free to get it. My bikini bottom box was pretty neat with some cool looking items. And I wouldn't say I absolutely love everything that was in it, but I do like it, and that's what matters. However, ever since I discovered the Loot Crate brand, there's something I've always wondered. Why did I personally never see classic Nickelodeon cartoons like Spongebob, Fairly Parent, Danny Phantom, etc. included in the animation brand of Loot Crate or Nintendo franchises in the Loot Gaming boxes? Maybe they were and I just missed them, but why?